hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel in this video we are going to look at the for loop so with the for loop let me just get it out here uh, we have the starting point we have the stopping point and we have the movement interval so in this case we have our i that is our identifier a variable name and we want the loop to start from zero so that is basically the starting point and then um, if I put the 5 here just like it is above there I want this program to stop when I is, is, um, is smaller than 5 so basically this program will keep on running the iterations will keep on carrying on until it gets to the point where I is smaller than 5 Ah, basically, uh, we'll just explain it further when we look at the example. And then this here is the movement interval. So I++ plus plus is the same as saying I is equals to I plus 1. This is the same thing as this. So basically, we just put I++ plus plus because it makes it simpler and it's quite shorter. Yes. So in this case, if we, we are to print this out, let's look at this in a logical manner. So we are saying that we should start from zero right so once it it it, it um comes to zero let's say print um print print i so let's try and note down what we can expect to see from this code i like um making my things look like this it looks a bit better so yeah so basically the the for loop will start it will look at int it will start at zero it will print zero right it will print a, a zero down and then it, it will check if zero is smaller than five it's true so it will carry on i plus plus now our next value is zero plus one is one it will check if one is smaller than five and yes one is smaller than five it will print that out and then it increases the value and then the new value now is one plus one is remember the increment is by one two is two uh, smaller than five no um i mean yes two is still smaller than five so then it will go to the next one and increase it which is three is three smaller than five yes and then we check four is four smaller than five yes and then we'll check five is five smaller than five no five is equals to five so that is where the iteration will stop so basically we should get zero one two three and four if we have to run this code right so that is um just the explanation of for loops now if we look at this example is the same code that i wrote up there it is just that i put it aside as a first example so compile this using f7 and we should get no errors it's compiling yes no errors and if i press f5 to run our code let's just wait and see it's loading it's loading yes it's loading yes there we go just pressed okay it should okay i see what happened f4 rather than printing let's use an alert instead so you can just pop up instead of us having to go through um one of those two boxes at the bottom so yes i will stop debugging and f5 again and there we go so there you have it zero one two three and four so you see it basically printed those things out and stopped by four because we can't carry on until five five is not is not smaller than five five is equals to five basically so you see, let me comment this out and go down to the next example. So looking at this one right here. So we are saying um, I 
should start by zero and basically i should be greater than minus five and i minus minus now basically i minus minus is the same as saying i is equals to i minus one so let's look at this so i starts from zero right that is our starting point and then the next one will be um the new value of i will be equals to zero minus one which is minus one then we go to the next one the next value of i will be um the previous value of i was minus one so we'll take it which is minus one minus one again remember we, we have to be minus subtracting one from this which gives us what minus two we go further we have i is equals to what is our previous i value it is minus two then we subtract one again equals to minus three so we do this again and again until we get to um it's gonna be minus three which gives us minus four and then we copy this again and paste uh, minus four which gives us minus five so now mind you i just put this here on purpose so let's see remember our i i should be um greater than minus five right now our i started off as i is equals to zero so it will print this out print this out this here is not greater than um it says yeah our i should be greater than minus five so basically this here is not smaller than minus five so we go to this we get to this minus four is um greater than minus five and then minus five is not greater than minus five it is equals to minus five if we look at this in a simpler manner so we know that going from negative to positive we will have minus five minus four minus three minus two minus one zero one two three basically right so we're looking for when i is greater than five for i to be greater than five we have to move what to the right hand side we're basically moving to the positive side you see that's for when i is greater than um minus five so when i if i has to be greater than five we start from zero we're going down we check minus one and minus one is still greater than minus five we check minus two and minus two is still greater than minus five we check minus three and minus three is also greater than minus five we check minus four and minus four is greater than minus five and then we checked minus five and minus five is not greater than minus five because it is equals to minus five so basically our iteration will stop by minus four so we should get um zero values uh, uh printed from zero minus one minus two minus three and minus four so i just had to break that down so you can understand it a bit more so if we have to run this let me use an alert again if we have to run this um f7 or oh, first let me stop debugging so f7 to just um compile and make sure there's no errors if we run this actually let me do this um we might get a problem since we already printed something using the alert we might get these things um overlap okay not overlapping but we need to put space so you can separate the previous code that we just ran from this one so i'll just use an empty string to uh, put a uh, uh what do you call this an empty line basically yes so f5 compile and uh, there we have it so you see zero negative one negative two negative three and negative four yes so it gave us the exact same output we um that we anticipated basically so let's go down to the next example looking at this one what do you think the output will be you can pause the video and uh, attempt it or write down what you think the output will be and then I'll just wait. Hopefully you have actually done it. <laughs> I'm sure many of you didn't pause the video. But um, let's try and put it 
um, in terms of 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 how we did it previously. So we know that our starting point is where i is equals to zero, and then the new i is determined by saying the previous one, which is zero plus two. So we are going in the intervals of two. So our next i value will be two, right? Then we go down further. I'll just copy and paste to make life easier for me. Uh, paste. So the next, um, we got i as two here. So we put it two. Two plus two will give us what? Four. And four plus two will give us what? Six. So let's stop right there. In this case, they said i should be smaller than six. So we're looking for values smaller than six. We started off by zero we checked it it is still smaller than six we went to two it is still smaller than six we went to four it is still smaller than six and then we checked six and six is not smaller than six this statement here saying six is smaller than six is not true six is instead equals to six so in this case what should we expect we should expect zero two and four to be printed out again i'll use our uh Use an alert to separate what we previously ran, uh, the code we previously ran, so we can uh, have an empty line separating that previous code with this one. And again, I'll also use an alert for this one because I love alerts. I enjoy these ones instead. So, F5. Oh, I needed to stop debugging first. So, F5. And okay. Yeah. There you have it, 0, 2, and 4. So you can see with with the for loop, we can go forward, we can go backwards, and we can go in any intervals that we want, basically. So you can even use this to solve some mathematical questions. Um, when you basically have, or when you want to separate even numbers from odd numbers, basically. So let's get back to our chart editor, and that's it, basically. That is it, basically. I hope you got some basic understanding of um, for loops in this video thank you very much guys and please do subscribe to my youtube channel like and share this video